If I can have everyone's attention here in the media center, please. If I can have everyone's attention, we're going to go ahead and get started with our media availability. We welcome at this time Ryan Newman, driver of the number 39 U.S. Army Chevrolet. Ryan currently sits ninth in points and has one win this season. Ryan, we're sitting here season finale here in Homestead. Just talk a little bit about the season thus far and your thoughts coming into the weekend. I think there's only two guys that are excited about being here. But um, <laughs> we're, um, you know, we're looking to end the season on a good note. Last weekend was a good, good race for us to, uh, to come from 30th to 5th and um, – it's important for our team to end, end on, a, on a good note, whether the 14 does or not. It's good for the organization to have two, uh, two strong uh, running teams at the end of a season to go into our biggest race next year. So um, you know, whether I get to make it back in here or not, we just need to have a good weekend and, and have some fun. Okay, we'll open up for questions for Ryan here in the media center. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. Okay, we'll start right here with Dwight. <laughs> DwightDrivingRaceTake.com. Uh, Ryan, you always have some really interesting things that you do in the off season. Uh, do you got anything planned that's going to be something yeah. different? Um, a little bit more hunting than I did last year. Uh, our typical snowmobile trip to Utah. Some friends we have out there would stay in a little cabin, run off of a um, propane generator and a wood stove, and uh, we'd rough it for a week, snowmobiling and having fun out there. Um, that's pretty much it. Spending time at home, cutting down a Christmas tree as a family, and enjoying the holidays. Okay, we'll take a question from over here and then come back to David. Uh, Kirk Johannes in Columbus Republic. Can you explain what it's been like watching Tony handle the owner and driver duties and be so successful at that this season? Where you at? Over here. Okay. Here. Um, he, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't see that side of it. I just see Tony Stewart as a driver. I don't, I don't see Tony Stewart as the owner handling that part of things. Um, you know, and that's one of the things I've always said is I think he does a good job of having the right people do their job so that whether he's the owner or not, he has the title of the owner, but he has the right people doing that job as far as the ownership goes. So I, I you know, he's, he's listed as that, but, um, you know, he's, um, and he's running the company from a responsibility standpoint. He makes the ultimate calls and decisions, but if the other people do their job, then he doesn't have to be involved as much as some other owners. Uh, and, and I think that, uh, that helps him be just the driver that he is. I don't mean just the driver that he is. I mean, just that responsibility side of it. Okay, we'll take our next question from David. Okay, hey Ryan, David Newton, ESPN.com. Is there such a thing as team orders in NASCAR? And on Sunday, if you're first, Tony's second, and Carl's third, Tony needs to win, do you let him win? I think there's always been some form of team orders, but uh, my, my little baby's one year old, and I can order her around all I want. It doesn't mean she's going to listen to me, so... Um, you know, from from my standpoint, it's business as usual. I'll, I'll do everything I can to help him. I'll do whatever I can to, to not hurt him, um, but I won't sacrifice for myself, from from for my team, for the U.S. Army, for you know everybody involved, for the fans. I don't think that's the right way of of racing, and I don't think Tony would see it that way. Or if the roles were rever were reversed, uh, he would expect, or I would expect him to do the same thing for me. That's not that's not how we were brought up. That's not how we race. Okay, go ahead with your question now. Yeah, Ryan Al Pearson, Auto Week. Brian was just in here, and he said that drivers know where the line is on track, and they know what they can and cannot say about the sport so they will not be fined or whatever. Do you guys know where the line is on the track, and do you know what you can and cannot say about the sport at times of political incorrectness? There's two parts to that. One part is, um, you know, saying the right things at the right time in the right place, which we're all kind of taught up to do when we're younger. But uh, the other part of it is, is how people, uh, you know, are, imp are impressed or lack of impressed, I guess, uh, from what you say at, the, at that time or at that place. Um, you know, and, and we've we've seen it, and we know people are cer certain people are are, um, you know, have been recipients of it. But um, you know, it's I think it's. I think it's a good thing that NASCAR manages that. I think it's a good thing that they do it the way they do. Um, it's not anything that is fun to talk about or any part of it that we need to be going to any deeper. But um, it, it, um, it's, it's tough um, to speak your piece sometimes when your piece is not what some people want to hear. Additional questions for Ryan? Please raise your hand. Okay, we'll take one in the back from Mike. Come back up to Reed. Mike Muller, MikeMuller.net. Since you're an engineer, and I'd like to start my question to you about this, electronic fuel injection at Daytona. We just had a test down there, and I guess we've had a test at Talladega. Can you talk about uh, what 
should the holes on the place be bigger or smaller, or do you get more fuel mileage or less fuel mileage? Looking at the Daytona 500, Daytona itself, what do you think from a physics standpoint and a numerical standpoint or a mathematical standpoint they should be doing with this thing? I know they dropped the car and lowered the spoiler and all sorts of stuff. I'm not, you know, I think the, the, the one most important thing that we need to do is keep the cars on the ground, which is, you know, keep them at a certain mile per hour range. Uh, and, and keeping in mind that once they get in a pack of 43, that they're going to be even faster yet. So, you know, you go back to Talladega, we saw, I think, cars qualifying at like 178 or 180, and, and they're racing at 200. So there's a, a big discrepancy there between the cars in the pack versus cars by themselves. And um, ultimately, the fuel injection, I haven't tested it at um, a restrictor plate track yet. Uh, I did it at Martinsville. I did it at Charlotte. But from what I've experienced and what I've seen is we're spending a lot of our time with the fuel injection trying to get them to drive like the carbureted cars, which, you know, we've got, uh, you know, in, an infinite amount of experience with. But once I think we can get a better understanding of the electronic fuel injection and then apply that to restrictor plates and apply it to make the cars actually drive better, that then we'll be, you know, we're, we're not educated enough, in my opinion, we're not educated enough, experienced enough with the fuel injection to actually go to a place like that and say, yeah, these are the things that we need to do. I don't know that there's a significant difference in how a fuel-injected engine re reacts to a restrictor plate versus, um, you know, a, a carbureted engine. I don't have that experience to be able to speak on it. But um, Daytona, the most important thing is that we go down there and we give the fans the kind of racing that they want. And, um, you know, obviously – that hasn't been the at least the majority rules that hasn't been the tandem style racing which i typically enjoy more than um, new york style traffic gridlock uh, stuck in the middle of of the pack so we'll um we'll see what they come up with okay we'll take a question from reed then go to bruce and terry reed spencer with sporting news the the flip side of david newton's question uh tony said yesterday that he would wreck his mother to win the to win the title if you're first he's second and he can get to your bumper would you expect him to move you if he needed to, yeah. I mean, that, and, and I would, I, I would do the same thing to him. Whether you know, I'm racing for a win, he's racing for a championship. If he has to pass me to win, and, and that's yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I'm not, I'm not gonna pull over for him. And, and like I said, he he wouldn't pull over for me. We're not, we're not raised that way. So, do what you got to do, man. It's uh, in the end, he owns my race car. So whatever he wants to do is fair game. Go ahead, Bruce. Bruce Martin with uh, SI.com. Kind of a, even more of a follow-up on that. The way Tony's kind of been approaching the last couple of races, you know, having some fun with Carl and trying to jab him a little bit. I mean, you know, are you kind of looking at that and seeing kind of a master at work here when it comes to trying to get inside Carl's head? I, I, think, I think he's having a lot of fun with it. I, you know, I think he obviously he's, he's performed better than, than I think anybody expected in the chase, uh, you know, not just from a win standpoint, but just pure leading laps in the cars. Uh, you know, they've, they've turned their team around. And, um, yeah, I think he, I think he has an, a, there's a sense of enjoyment there for him on the mental side as much as it is the physical side of, of just putting up the numbers. Uh, he, he has a lot of fun do, doing that. So I, I think it's uh, – I think this inter this this you know next couple of days are going to be interesting. To see how all that stuff plays out. Okay, we'll I, th I think I, I, and I don't I don't mean to sound unbiased, but I think it's a it's a pretty equal game right now. I think they're they're both stabbing pretty hard at each other. Terry, and then we'll go to Brian. Terry Blaney, ESPN.com. Ryan, on the other part of Al's question, uh, Brian also said that you guys definitely know the limit on the track and where the line is and when you go over the line. And when you don't, um, I've heard a lot of drivers say they don't really know where the line is. Do you feel yeah, like you know where I'd the line is? I'd have to say is? that Brian was probably, I see me talking about Brian Vickers. No, Frank. Brian France, okay. Um, <laughs> well, Vickers has had a few issues here the last couple of weeks, so I'm just checking. Um, I don't think it's, I, I think, I don't think it's fair for him to say that we all know the line because I don't think that that line is, is, you know, a black and white line. I think it's obviously, um, you know, it's, it's got some, it's got some senses of confusion about it, so I, I, I don't. I'm not trying to ruffle anybody's feathers, but I don't think he can say that we all understand because we we all don't understand. Otherwise, we wouldn't have some of these situations or dilemmas. And 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 um, I don't. I don't think people are going to put themselves in a position where they're going to lose lose their money because of their opinion. I don't. Nobody really. I don't think is that dumb in our sport. Okay, go ahead, Brian. Then we'll come back up to Dustin. Brian Nelson, Motor Racing Network. Ryan. Um, 
You've got some charity events coming up for the foundation, and uh, typically this is the time of year where those charitable organizations really receive a bulk of their uh, contributions. How important is the holiday season for, for the Ryan Newman Foundation and these events that are on the way? Well, that's, that's one of the tough things about our schedule is we only get so much time to do some of the things we love. And, and our fishing tournament on uh, December 10th and our foundation dinner on December 9th, the night before, is, is uh, something that we've purposely planned to be in the off season so that we can dedicate the time and, and our resources to be able to have some fun and do that. So raising, raising money for, uh, for the animals and doing the things that we do, Bass Pro Shops has been a great partner for us and, and uh, giving away a... Uh, I shouldn't say giving away. The winner receives a, uh, a Nitro Z9 boat uh, for our fishing tournament. So some amazing things that we do and, and the amazing partners that we have with the Ryan Newman Foundation to, um, to do the things that we do, raise the money that we raise, as well as the awareness, which is sometimes more important than the money. Okay, go ahead with your question, Dustin. Dustin Long, Landmark Newspapers. You mentioned earlier just about uh, you can order your daughter around and she might not listen. Um, I guess if you put yourself in the role of your daughter and NASCAR in the role of you, with, with Brian France saying that, you know, you, they don't want the, the drivers to say denigrating things about the direction of the sport or the quality of the racing. Do you understand that? And because obviously you got hit with that last year in particular, how has that changed how you address things or how you, how you speak about things? If I could get NASCAR to change my diapers, it'd be an amazing thing. <laughs> no, I, 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 in all seriousness, um, it, it's like I said, it's tough. I mean, sometimes you get blindsided by those things, and 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 um, I, 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 my point was is you can't. It's 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 subjective. It's a matter of somebody's opinion, and what I say may be what I understand in my mind, but the way you take it, or or want to take it, can be taken a different way, and and it all depends on. Your mood. It all depends on the listener's mood and and what what they what their perspective is. And, and if they have a a negative impression of you or of the race or whatever that goes before that, and then you speak your mind or you speak your piece, then you know that's not taken the right way. And then there's you know there's a penalty for that. It's known that there's a penalty for that. So it's um and like I said, it's not something that we want to discuss or talk about because it's not good for our sport. But it has to be managed, and I think they do a fair job of, of, of managing that. And, um, you know, what, whether it's a certain driver or a certain car owner or a certain situation, it, 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 it has, you know, every, every cause has an effect, and, and they have to uh, play that, that judge. Has, has there been, has there, have there been times when you've held back on something because of your experience, and when you look back, you thought maybe that was a good thing, or other times you thought, you know, maybe I should have said something I, I, because of the uncertainty, because, like you said, being blindsided. And that's where I, I want to go back to what, you know, the, the comment about what Brian said was, that, you know, that we all know that, and, and we don't all know that line. We know that area, but we don't know that line. And, yes, there are times, and I'm sure you could probably talk to every driver out there where they wanted to say something at one point, and they decided not to, whether it was a four-letter word, whether it was a comment, whether it was a you know, a, a, a biased opinion of somebody or, or, or whatever, there, there's, that has always happened and probably has always happened in, in the history of all sports. But knowing that line is entirely different than knowing that area of where you cross that line. And I think we've all been in that area and we all have an idea of where that line is, but not everybody has the same understanding of exactly where that line is, and that's my point. There's things that I've heard people say that I've questioned. There's things that I've said that I don't think should have ever been an issue, but they were. So, I mean, like I said, there's, it's, it's not black and white. It's not cut and dry. It's not that simple, period. It's okay, we'll take our final question from Lee. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. It seems when the chase began, there was like a, you know, reversal of roles with you and Tony. You were the guy that was, you know, going up, 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 and, you know, had a really decent first 26 races. Then we get into the chase, and it's just kind of like flip. Is there any rhyme or reason as to why your role's reversed? I'm not, I'm not sure it's baffled. Why do we have pigs playing? In? I'm not sure it's baffled me because, um, um, you know, you look at our stats. Um, you know, we had the top fives, the top tens going. We had everything going for us as far as being one of the guys that, you know, should have been there in the chase, at least, you know, before four or five races to go, been in the hunt, and um, we're not. And I think if you look back at it, 
um, from from my standpoint, we we had we had some struggles. I mean, we 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 were the team that should have finished at least third at Chicago, but ran out of fuel and um, finished eighth. We go into New Hampshire, we back up our qualifying efforts, but we did not back up our race efforts from the spring race. I forget if we finished ninth or tenth, whatever it was, but you know our teammate goes and wins the first two. And that that. That performance of the other team didn't affect our team, but we knew that we were capable of it, and we weren't following through. And then Dover and Kansas were a struggle for us. Kansas, we had a, um, a lug nut fall off on a green flag pit stop, lost two laps. The race went green for a really long time. It took us to the last last actual caution flag to get back on the lead lap, and I think we finished like 18th or 20th or something. So we just haven't had the performance. We haven't had. I mean, going in even into um, Chicago, we had a we had a loose wheel on the car. I had to come in. Sorry, um, Texas had a loose wheel on the car and um, had to come in, lost two laps, the very first pit stop, and came back and, and, and finally battled back to finish 16th, I think it was. So the 16th number is not something that we're proud of, but going from 37th or whatever we were to 16th is what has been a strength of our team. I just, uh, it's so frustrating for me to have to spend so much time fighting back when I know our team's capable of so much more. Ryan, thank you very much for your time today. Good luck this weekend. Thank you.